Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1294A, and today's date is May 31st, 2017, and the title of the episode is, This is Why the Dollar Empire is About to Fall. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, out in the UK, we can see that the UK is negotiating with the EU to exit. And we know that the central banking system, well, they don't want anyone exiting their system. And if you would like to exit, well, you need to pay up and you need to abide by all our demands. And right now, we can see that the negotiations, well, they're not going too well. And we see that there are EU documents that break down to the smallest item that the EU is demanding. Now, when we look at this, we can see that this is going to be a non-starter for the UK side. In the two policy papers, the bloc has elaborated its stance on the Brexit bill and citizens' rights. No detail is too small. Britain is even on the hook for funding teachers at the elite European schools that educate EU civil servants' children. On the citizens' rights, the EU spells out in greater detail the protections it wants to secure for nearly 5 million people on the wrong side of the Brexit, 3.5 million EU nationals in the UK, and 1.2 million Britons on the continent. The document stresses the European Court of Justice must have full jurisdiction for ruling on disputes about citizens' rights, while the European Commission ought to have full power for monitoring whether the UK is upholding the bargain. Diplomats on the EU side say they cannot contemplate scaling back any of these demands, and they will not. So it looks like the UK can do one or two things. They can go along and they can bargain with the EU and try to meet all these demands, or they can exit without signing an agreement. And it looks like they might be heading in this direction. We need to remember one thing. The EU exports more to the UK than vice versa. And it looks like the UK has the upper hand in all of this. And we'll have to see how this plays out. But we can see what the central banking system is trying to do. They're trying to keep them in line. And they're trying to keep a hold of the UK. Now, here in the United States, we are seeing the economy completely break down. And from today's data and from all the information that is coming out, the system is deteriorating at an accelerated pace and it's getting worse as time goes on now this is all part of the plan to collapse the economy and they're just letting it go and ever since they started raising the rates we can see this was part of the central banking plan we see already that bank of america jp morgan chase they're already warning that their revenue will be down as much as 15 percent and moving forward throughout this year it's not going to improve. We had something very interesting happen today. The Chicago PMI stats came out today around uh, 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they reported that the index, well, it fell from 57 to 55.2. This is the lowest since January of 2017, and it looked like the Chicago PMI was declining. And then all of a sudden, at 11.21 Eastern Standard Time, there was a correction and they said, oh no, 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 it's not declining, it's improving. And they gave us the manipulated numbers of 59.4. It looks like they let out the real numbers and then they realized what they did and they revised the numbers and reissued the numbers saying this is a correction, which I thought was very interesting. Now in the real estate market, we see the pending home sales, well, they have tumbled to 5.4% year on year. This is the biggest drop in pending home sales since August of 2014. This is the second monthly drop in a row, which is a negative 1.3 month on month. Now, what we're looking at is we're looking at new home sales declining, existing home sales declining. We are seeing pending home sales declining. During this period of the year, spring going into summer, this is supposed to be the good time for real estate. And we discussed this many, many times before. What we're seeing is a complete breakdown of the system. And it looks like the real estate market is going to crash. Now, what we need to realize is that 
there are bubbles everywhere. There are bubbles in the real estate market. The Case-Shiller Index that looks at these 20 cities, they've blown up the bubbles in some areas way above what it was back in 2008. Now, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari is out there saying that, listen, we can't tell if there's a bubble. We have a very hard time spotting the bubbles. Remember Ben Bernanke? He says, yeah, we, we can't tell if there's bubbles. We can't spot them. And this is when he was telling us there was no re, uh, recession, forecasting any type of recession in the year of 2008. And in the year of 2008, all the bubbles popped and we were in a recession. So they're trying to convince us that they can't figure out where the bubbles are. And if we look at the 20 different cities, we're not going to look at all of them, but if we look at most of them, we can see that there are bubbles. Let's look at the Case Shiller U.S. Home Price Index. Well, as we can see, we are way above the housing bubble back in 2008. If we look at different areas, like in Boston, the housing bubble right now is 9% above the peak of 2005. If we look at Seattle, the housing bubble right now is 13% above the peak back in July of 2007. If we look at Denver, it is 38% above the housing bubble back in August of 2006. If we look at Dallas-Fort Worth, it is 37% above the housing bubble back in June of 2007. Atlanta, the same thing. Portland, the same thing. San Francisco, the same thing. New York, the same thing. So when we look at this, we can see where the bubbles are. We're above that bubble range, which tells us on the way down, it is going to be a disaster. And remember, these bubbles were propped up, not by the everyday American. It was propped up with free money, hedge funds, and most of these places that are out there, they're completely empty. No one's even living in them. Some are rented, but these hedge funds have purchased thousands upon thousands of homes. Foreign buyers came in and they bought them as investments. Rent them if you can, hold on to them, let them go up in value. And when this comes down, it's going to be a complete disaster. And we can see these bubbles from a mile away. So can the Fed. They're lying. They're the ones who created the bubbles, but they don't want they want to pretend that we don't we don't see anything. Now, we see a bubble in the tech market. There are 10 companies that are responsible for half of the entire S&P rally year to date with the top 5 Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. They have accounted for nearly 40% of returns. And we're starting to see the first crack in the tech bubble right now. Investors they have pulled more than 716 million from the most popular tech technology exchange traded fund last week. And this fund is the technology select sector. And what we're seeing is huge outflows because the bubble is at its top and what people and what companies and what investors and what speculators you normally do insiders normally do is they remove their funds because they realize it's time to get out. We are seeing this in the stock market. We're seeing it in the real estate market. We're seeing it everywhere. They are leaving and trying to get the everyday retailer in to take the hit. Now, Molden Economics, they are warning that the next recession may be a complete reset of all asset valuations. He says, we are coming to a period I call the great reset. As it hits, We'll have to deal one way or another with the largest twin bubbles in the history of the world. One of those bubbles is the global debt, especially government debt. The other is the even larger bubble of government promises. In the next recession, if revenues drop by the same percentage as they did in the last recession, without even counting likely higher expenditures this time, well, what we're going to see is massive deficits because we will have the loss of the tax revenue and it's going to be a complete disaster. The catalyst could be a European recession that spills over into the US or it might be one triggered by a US monetary and fiscal mistake. 
or a funding crisis in China or an emerging market meltdown. Whatever the cause, the next recession will be just as global as the last one and there will be there will be more buildup of debt and more political and economic chaos. The Great Reset will also bring an increase to volatility and the correlation among asset classes will once again approach 1.0 as it did during 2008 and 2009. The recession is going to be so deep, actually it's going to be a collapse, that we will have a complete reset of all asset valuations. And we can see right now we are headed in this direction. I mean, there are so many people out there calling for a collapse of the system. There are cycles, uh, David Stockman, Charles Nenner, Harry Dent, uh, Cliff High, many others are saying that, yes, we are headed for a system breakdown. And we can see it. We can see what is happening in the everyday people's economy. When you look around, you see stores closing. You see more and more houses for sale. There's no traffic. You see the housing bubbles have been blown up to the top and they're getting ready to pop. And again, this is the plan of the central bank. This is the plan of Trump. Now, we have to remember, Trump is in office right now and he is preparing us for this transition. And the only way to do this is to cut off the funding from the central bank because this is how the deep state survives. Remember, the deep state is intertwined into government. They have their claws in everything. They've been there for quite a while. They've been listening into all conversations. They are trying to find something on Trump and they're doing whatever they possibly can. And Fitch came out with a warning saying that the most plausible scenario for the dollar being meaningfully displaced does not begin with the emergence of a viable alternative, but rather it being undermined right here in the US. And they are right because what Trump is doing right now, he is doing many of the things behind the scenes. And it's not just Trump. There are many other individuals that are working with him. And remember, he needs to tread lightly through all of this because the deep state, they will try to stop him at every turn. And it doesn't mean that this plan is going to work. Just like the central bank's plan, the deep state plans don't always work. But we can see that they are moving in this direction. Now, one way they're trying to cut off the funding and bring the system down and to remove the dollar is they're trying to pass two pieces of legislation and they're working their way through Congress. One is called the Federal Reserve Transparency Act, uh, Transparency Act and the other is the Financial Choice Act. Now, the first would allow the Government Accountability Office to audit the monetary policy decisions of the Fed and make subsequent recommendations for administrative or legislative action. Now, this is not the surface level audits. This is a deep audit to find out what the Fed has been up to. The second would restrict the Fed's ability to provide financial sector support to avert or address a crisis and empower a commission to review and recommend changes to the Fed's operations, as well as to consider a rules-based rather than a discretionary monetary policy framework. Basically, what these pieces of legislation are doing is that they're going to be taking control of the Federal Reserve, and this needs to be done. Now, remember, this is part of the plan to counter the deep state. And again, the deep state is going to try to maneuver and they're going to try to stop this. Now, if these pieces of legislation are implemented, the proposal would diminish the appeal of the dollar as a reserve currency over time. Investors considering dollar assets and other dollar exposures would weigh the risk of political interference in a monetary policy decisions and the possibility of the Fed's remit being broadened to include congressional priorities such as indirect funding of infrastructure investment. Now, those individuals that are supporting the FRTA and the FCA, they argue that the risks identified by those concerned about the Fed's independence and incidentally the dollar's global role are in fact the purpose of the proposed legislation. So Fitch is warning that if the world is granted more transparency into the Fed and what it does and how it works, 
it would end the U.S. hegemony. And the U.S. would lose its place as the sole dominant geopolitical superpower. And this is what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to rework the system. They're trying to get this legislation passed. And remember, there are many things happening all at once. And just like someone working in a corporation and you're trying to change things in a corporation, especially when you have everyone fighting against you, you just can't come out and say, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I don't care what you say. Because we could see this didn't work. Just like in government, actually government's even worse. Trump tried in the beginning to make deals and work with the deep state because I think in his mind that he thought that he'd be able to work as a businessman with these individuals. But these individuals are not businessmen or businesswomen. These individuals are part of a deep state system where they want where they want what they want and they talk in absolutes and they don't see any gray areas. The gray area is the negotiation. They don't see any of this. So Trump has completely changed his tactic right now. And you can see bit by bit, he needs to unravel and remove what the deep state has done. And one of those ways, and it's remember, it's not just him. He's working with other individuals that are with him on this. They're trying to cut off the funding of these individuals because that's the only way you can destroy them. And this is what they're trying to do right now. And in the process, they will get rid of the central bank. Now, this will have a cascading effect, of course, because that threatens the dollar as a reserve currency. It removes the central bank, which puts the whole system into chaos. And this is where we are headed right now. Now, remember, Trump was out in Saudi Arabia. He was out in the Middle East. And we can see right now OPEC has come up with a new strategy to balance their oil market. Now, remember, Saudi Arabia has been speaking to Russia. Trump has also sent a representative to the China's uh, Belt and Road Conference. And we can see right now that OPEC, well, they have a new strategy to balance the oil market. And it's to cut oil exports to the U.S., a move intended to drain near record high crude oil inventories. OPEC originally thought the six months of combined production cuts would be sufficient to balance the oil market, but the market still looks oversupplied. So in a global marketplace, why does it really matter where the Saudis send their oil? In terms of a global supply, a barrel sent to Asia is the same as a barrel exported to the U.S. But the difference is, is that the U.S. has real-time data on crude oil storage, unlike most other places in the world. And that data is publicly available. So they're going to use this and they're going to experiment by cutting off oil to the United States, bringing down the amount of oil that is being brought into the United States, which means we might see oil prices move up a little bit from this. But we'll have to see how this all turns out. And I think behind the scenes, what this is all about is shifting the shipments of oil. Now, remember, Trump is looking in Alaska. He's looking to drill offshore. He's looking at the land. He's looking at what natural resources there are. There's a review going on right now. So when we start putting all this together, we can see where this is all headed. And he has to do this one step at a time, one piece of legislation at a time. And as we move forward, he will be doing more and more. And we can see at this point that the central bank, the deep state, they are pushing to bring down the system. They want to control what is happening because once they do this in their minds, they think they can stop everything that is happening because the Trump will be too busy with the collapse that they created. This legislation might completely disappear. We might have an event that follows along with this. And this is part of their plan. His plan is to get all of this passed or very close to getting passed trying to unravel what they've done and make a move to get rid of the deep state and the central bank. And we can see there's a huge fight going on right now. But one thing is for sure, we are going to go through a period where it's going to be a huge reset. And during this period, it's going to be very difficult to get supplies, to get um, oil. It's going to be very difficult to get food. It's very difficult to get anything because credit is going to freeze up. The system is going to be a complete disaster and this is why 
you need to be ready for what is coming. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.